Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a, one day, a wonderful Sunday evening. Uh, today is a wonderful and fascinating episode we're going to be speaking about. We have two beautiful ladies that have stopped by the Sherrard Show. You know them um, from their respective industries of music, fashion, as well as entertainment. And they're going to be talking about some things that's very interesting, very enlightening, and also that's going to help you along your way in terms of your journey of whatever it is that you would like to undertake. Um, but before we begin, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by eBoat. eBoat is the revolutionary way of losing weight. You can lose from 15 to 100 pounds in 90 days, all in a healthy way of doing it. Just taking one pill a day, doing 20 minutes of walking, and you can be able to lose the pounds you want to lose. eBoat, just go to eBoat.com. That's e-boat.com. And put Sherrard, just type in the keyword Sherrard, and you get 20% off your first order. And then also the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Care Better Health, the Care Better Health, where you can take CBD that's going to make you feel better uh, for back pains, for aches in your feet, all over your body. But Care Better Health, again, is one that can help you in feeling better, the healthy and all natural way. Just go 24 Sherrard, just type that in at carebetter.health and you get 20% off your first order. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, this particular episode I'm so excited about because these three particular ladies have done so much in the industry. We have one individual who was born in Jamaica. She was born in Kingston, Jamaica. She has been, now this is so impressive. She was on Law & Order, ladies and gentlemen, but she's also the youngest woman to ever grace the cover of Essence Magazine. You can actually see that right on your screen. She's also done some cool and mild commercials, you know, those cigarette commercials way back in the day. And she only, she looks so young, but also she has a foundation where she's helping the homeless, uh, doing big things um, in the industry, so many things. And she's here to talk about how she's taken over her career and taking control of her career and was able to rise above it all in the midst of all the haters out there. So welcome to the show, Thais Walsh. How are you, young lady? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me here today. I appreciate it. She's uh, comfortably sitting on her couch in New York City. Thank you. For being here the show. <laughs> yes. And then we have another young lady. She uh, was one of the lead vocals for the Supremes, the legendary group, the Supreme. Actually, she was the last member to join and she all sang with uh, Sherry Payne as well as Mary Wilson. She is a busy person. She even had her own television show. She's traveled and toured with Stevie Wonder. Also part of uh, Ray Charles's Ray Letts done so many huge things in the industry. And just guess what, ladies and gentlemen, she's just getting started. She stopped by the Sherrod Show to talk about her journey. Mrs. Suze Green, welcome to the show. How are you, young lady? I'm very good. I'm very, very blessed just to be breathing, living, laughing, having a good time. Well, we appreciate and that. <laughs> Thank you so pleasure. much. Thank it's you for stopping pleasure. by the show. Now I'm gonna start with you, Suze. Now, Suze, being in the industry, um, since 1976, doing all these humongous things all the way to 2020, how have you been able to sustain with all this energy and stand relevant in the industry? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. You know, I've been in show business all my life and you, you realize pretty early on, literally, I did baby food commercials in New York City. And that's where I, I did all of my first commercials and jobs and the like. I started singing with Harry Belafonte when I was around 14 years old. And you know, you, you realize show business is this, there's hills and valleys. And you want very much to remain relevant, but as long as you are satisfying your creative urges, you know, being relevant kind of never comes into your mind, but there are things that you can do to be seen. You take a lot of pictures, you, you, know, you get out and about, and you collaborate. I'm a songwriter at heart. You know, I, that's what has supported me through the years is these fabulous songs, writing for, oh, so many people and, and really having a, a wonderful success at it. You know, it makes you realize collaborating with people in every walk of life brings kind of brings the energy up, brings new things into your life. And that's what I believe in doing. You know, I also believe that in order to remain relevant, you have to present things that you have created to the world. If you're not getting jobs in the acting industry, then you need to write a play. You need to do something. I mean, we've got the web for heaven's sake. 
we can put what we create out there and the people who are looking for new music, new stories, new photos, videos, whatever, they will find you. That's the magic of it, of digital, our digital excellence. Well, Suze, so, so, so one thing you're saying is that you're inferring that if things dry up, just create your own lane. Is that correct? That's it, you know? That's, That's very good. very true. And now, I would love to see people, particularly people of color, collaborate more. Pull your money together and make a movie. Pull your money together. Make music. Make art, photography, tech, whatever the things are that we have as tools. That's, that's you know, it's, it's, we're blessed. They're blessings that we're alive at this particular time. You know, when the world is so crazy, we still have the opportunity to take this platform and move forward and do something new, try something different. That is absolutely correct. Now, I'm going to kick it over to you, Thais. Now, um, this young lady, again, was the youngest uh, female African-American to ever grace the cover of Essence magazine. You can see it on your monitor there. Absolutely beautiful. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. She has done so much more, including, um, as you see running on your on your screen now, she also was on the hit show Law and Order um, mm -hmm. from 1992 to 1993. Now, Taisha, I'm going to, uh, uh, Thaisa, I'm going to kick it to you. How were you able to stay relevant and keep busy in the industry? As Suzanne said, creating uh, opportunities for myself and being out and making myself relevant, uh, recreating myself all the time, going from being a model to being an actor, studying my craft, doing theater, a lot of theater in New York, letting people know that and kind of communicating and letting people know that this is what you want to do and you're trying to do this and people, and it's so wonderful because people will support you. If they see that you have the heart and you want to do it and you're serious about what you're trying to do, they will uh, support what you're trying to do. There's a lot of people in this business that support young people coming up, especially when I was young coming into the business, there was Beverly Johnson and all of them that really supported what I was trying to do, Pat Cleveland, Billy Blair and all of those, Bon Gretchen Shepherd, uh, you know, just a lot of the girls that embrace you when you were coming in, especially being a black model back in 79 <laughs> and 80. It wasn't a lot of us. So we all kind of joined together and we became this family. So and I think I stay relevant because I tried to reinvent myself and continue to move forward in a business that if you stay stagnant, you get lost. Now, now um, and, and that's a very interesting point, and we're going to talk more about that in a moment because um, there's so much to um, uh, uh, speak about because it's, it's, it's very complimentary and very honorable to see you young ladies, still young, doing powerful things in the industry today, and it's very inspirational to the younger ladies out there. Now, Suze, for you, um, in the 50s and the 60s, when the Supremes were really, really hot, and even in the 70s doing big, big things, and Diana Ross was the lead, and everybody was saying Diana Ross and the Supremes. Now, after she left, and it was you, um, Mary Wilson, as well as Sherry Payne, now, was it difficult for you to be a part of the Supremes without having to deal with a lot of backlash when you joined a group? Well, not really. You know, I, I say on stage, I say, you know, there were three little girls who went to Detroit and they were Diane Ross, Florence Ballard, and Mary Wilson. And then Cindy Birdsong came into the group. When Diana left, she was replaced by Jean Terrell who had some pretty terrific hits of her own. And the Supremes fans continued throughout. We still see some of the same faces. Linda Lawrence came into the group, then Sherry Payne, and then myself, Suse Green, who was the last Supreme. But they were very welcoming to me. You know, it's, a, it's quite heady to be involved in something that has such history. You know, they, they moved into a position to make it possible for other artists of color to be able to play those big rooms that had only been played by white acts before that. And the Supremes were a special kind of a thing, I think, to the world. You know, they were three young ladies who were individual in their look and they came together 
And even though there were nine altogether, you know, eventually through the years, the ideal of the Supremes stayed true. So I had been groomed growing up in New York City for show business. I've always known what I was going to do as a writer, as a performer, a singer, an actor, whatever. You know, I went to the School of Performing Arts. I majored in drama. That's the school that the film Fame and the TV show Fame came about. But you see, show business is something that you decide to do because you are nurturing talent. And true talent will out, regardless of changing faces, regardless of changing genres or times. Every generation has their own music. Blessed for me, you know, I came into the group at a time that disco was going on. And the Supremes, my Supremes with Mary Wilson and Sherry Payne were able to transcend that. We did songs that were danceable, but that had real, real strings and fantastic arrangements. And I was asked to be in the group. Bob Jones, who was the, um, the head of publicity at Motown International, at Motown, was a dear friend of my mom. And when they determined that Cindy Birdsong was leaving, he suggested me. Now I've been prepared all my life for show business. So to step into those big shoes, you know, I had had a lot of responsibility before then singing solos and backgrounds with Stevie Wonder, with Ray Charles, with Ray Charles particularly, you sang an 18 piece band, you know, of really amazing entertainers of just fantastic musicians. And then to go to Stevie Wonder, where Wonder Love, Wonder Love was one of the baddest bands there ever was. You know, you had 10 people, musicians, singers, and Free. That's when I wrote Free with Denise Williams and Hank Red and Nate Watts, we had sort of a, a situation where you, you know, you woodshed, you get, you get together and you rehearse every day. And that work ethic carried me over into the Supremes. You know, I was ready for it. Yeah, I, I can tell you're ready right now. I mean, you just <laughs> the note right now. You're about to cut up. I know you, Suzette, but you'll have your moment, you'll have your moment uh, with that. And, and and with that being said, I'm going to compare two things for both of y'all. This is for both of you. If I'm going to start with you, Thais. Um, Looking at your acting, for example, on Law and Order, Law and Order is such a show where you have to bring it or get off the stage on the camera, Law and Order, because that show is, is, has, is a long running show with some top notch talent. And when you see Thais acting in, um, in, in, in Law and Order, you know she's big time. Now, <laughs> acting, it seems like today, in many ways um, has taken shortcuts and you don't see that much great acting like you did yesteryear. Now, I'm gonna ask you, do you agree with that, Thais? Now, also for you, Suze, um, you were speaking about genre of music. Um, and I'll let you think about this for a moment. I love the era of music where you all come from because your the sound and, and songs that you sing about and speak about, my goodness, it's timeless. And Supreme's music, the Isley Brothers, Marvin Gaye, Sam Cooke, have been sampled for thousands of times because it's great music. So my yes. question to you, Suze, is do you feel the music has changed for the better or for the worse? But let me get your answer first, Thais, and then I'll get yours, Suze. Well, I think there's still great acting out there. I think that... Um, people are putting in the work. And once you put in the work, there's some things that aren't as great, true, but I still think there's a lot of great talent out there, especially a lot of the young great talent that's coming through. And I think with me, I was, as Suze said, I was prepared by being, dancing on Soul Train and being in front of a camera and knowing how to be in front of a camera, how to get your spotlight. And then I think that watching other actors being on that show and watching Epetha uh, Merkison and kind of trying to simulate her <laughs> in, in, in my character when I was developing my character is to go, you know what, let me watch her and study and see what she's doing and the nuances, not just, and I think sometimes now in the business, it's about the nuances. It's about, it's not, no, it's not about the nuances. It's about the big, you know, everybody wants to be big. Everybody wants to overemphasize. And, and I had to learn that coming from theater because theater is everything is huge, you know? So I had to really learn to bring that in and watch the 
nuances that like a Felicia Rashad or Epatha or people that I respected as actors, Viola, what they did and the little things that made the character become life, not so much the bigness of it, but the small things that really bring you in and draw you in to who you are and, and help you develop what your character is by thinking of the nuances and the small things that make that character live. Like what is the background? What are, what does she like? What does she like to eat? Not just the words. Cause sometimes you watch, I watch some people and it becomes, they're just saying the words and I don't feel that they have a substance or something that's solid that their foundation is on, you know, like, what was her day like before she got to the office? What's her, what is her responsibilities when she gets home? Does she have children? Does she have a husband? Does she, what's her best friend is calling her on the phone? I mean, those things you don't see, but those things you have to think about when you're developing your character. And I think sometimes because of the microwave world that we're living in now and everything has to be like this, that we bring that you see some things that are on television that you see that they're doing that. That's why you can, the difference between a great actor and someone that's just kind of, as we call it, phoning it in, mm -hmm. you can tell because they didn't, you know, like, what's her sign? What's that, yeah. you know, what is she, what is, who is she on the inside when she's not at this job? or when she's not doing this particular scene, what did she do before? What is she still in her mind that she has to do afterwards? Because we're always thinking of like, okay, after I finish this interview, what am I gonna go do? You know, so that is a part of who I am. So that you have to find those things in the character as well to make sure that you find those little things because I'm not, we're not one dimensional. And sometimes you see one dimensional characters. And even though the scene is that one scene, there's still other dimensions to that character that you need to have in the back of your head, in your subconscious that you're living in mm. to make the character full. Very good, very good. Now, um, I, I like that response and I'm gonna have a, a rebuttal to you, but let's take Suze's uh, response to the question in regards to music. Well, music, you know, music is, has an ebb and flow. And every generation adds something on, something that they, you know, they can reach out for that touches them. But music doesn't really change. The essence of it is there in that it is a communicative skill, you know. In order to remain relevant in this industry, in the music industry particularly, you have to listen to what's out there, know what's good, know the difference between what's good and what's not. And, you know, you, you write a song. Well, I wrote a song called Unconditional Love that's been very, very wonderful for Sherry and Joyce and I. It was our latest single. And it's a love song. And, you know, people need love songs because people love. It's, you know, it's what we are. It's who we are. And then I'm very happy to, to, to have heard just recently that the Black Music Association of Los Angeles uh, and the Academy of the Arts has nominated Unconditional Love for the best national song. Thank and you know, you don't, you don't think about those things when you're writing a song. Well, my you question, think about the moment, you know, that's what it is. But my question to you, Suze, and, and, and what you're saying is, I understand what you're saying, but why is it that when you hear some Smokey Robinson, Lionel Richie um, and Sam Cooke, uh, Brooke Benton, you stop in your step, your tracks, and stop and listen, and that music is timeless. It's transpirational, yeah. but it's, it seems that music after that is only like a fad. Well, you know, I think every generation is owed their own music. I won't put it down. I can only say certain things. There's good and bad of every genre of music, and the proof of that is that a real song goes on and on and on and on and on. That's why samples, I mean, samples put my son through school. What can you say? It did, you know, I can't help it. You know, it was on Michael Jackson's Off The Wall album. That song is the most 
covered song in his discography because jazz artists can get a hold of it. You know, people who like dance music can get a hold of it. If you just want to dance with your baby or just hang out, you know, you can hold and feel these songs. But Mickey Stevenson, who was the first A&R man at, at Motown Records, said that music has a sacred element. If a real song touches hearts, changes lives, moves through time, lyrics that are sweet, that resonate in our spirits, in our heart, you know, you can't, you cannot, you cannot get over that. That's something that goes on and on and on, you know, you can't deny it. And then again, you know, you've got Lizzo, you've got Lady Gaga, you've got whoever is, you know, Beyonce, these hardworking artists who can really sing, by the way, you yeah, know? Beyonce great. started her own genre of production and of singing. So music is infinite and we can't just limit just because if it's something we don't like, we can't say that it's not touching somebody, you know? Absolutely. I agree with that. I totally agree with that when that comes to the arts as well. You know, when you see a good performance of somebody, no matter how time, many times you've seen that film, you're like, you're still affected by it. That's right. You know, or every time, if, when you see a play, every time you see it, you're affected by it. So, and there's, I mean, they're the young talent that's coming up right now that's really doing great work. Yeah. I mean, they really are. And you're affected by their work. You know, one thing that's very interesting is that um, you think of your favorite movie, the reason why it's your favorite movie is because you never forget how you felt when you watched it. That's right. That's and right. Each John, and each, and each, and I just think that each age, you know, like my age, we look at all the old 30s and 40s and 50s, you know, and then they're going to look at, you know, the the ones that are back in the 80s, this yeah. generation will look back at the ones in the 70s, and those are their favorite. I mean, yeah. I sat up and watched um, the other day, I watched Enemy of the State, and I forgot how good it was. And I've seen it thousands of times, and I was like, yes. Lou was really good in this, and Dean Hackman, and, and I was just, and I got caught up in it yeah. thinking that I was just putting it on just to do something else. And I ended up sitting and actually watching it and realizing that this was really a great movie, and that was done. I can't even remember what year it was done in, but. They're great films Absolutely. that are in every generation, every mm -hmm. era. There's great actors yes. that come. Chad Boswick. That's right. Chadwick Boseman. Chad, I mean, Chadwick Boseman. You know, he was a phenomenon in this business. And he's this generation. That's correct. That's right. That's and he was, he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I he, think. This I'm sorry. We really appreciate the great acting watching him. Mm. It's true. And that's going to inspire someone else to watch him. Like I've watched other people that were before me, you know, that's why I wanted to do theater and why one of the reasons after I got out of, decided not to model anymore for a while, you know, is that I moved to New York so I could study mm. under, in, at NEC, which is Negro Ensemble Company because I wanted to study where some of the greats studied at. You know, I wanted to have that under yeah. my belt. I wanted to be under the, a Woody King, you know, New Federal. I wanted to know yeah. what black theater and, and what that whole experience was because I know that Angela Bassett and all, and even though they were acting when I was modeling because I went into modeling first, mm. I found out that I wanted to be under those people's I wanted to walk in their shoes, walk in the lines that they walked in, you know, and be a part of what they walked in. And so that's why I wanted to be in New York and study theater and walk in the streets they walked on and, and be in the same theater companies they performed in and be under, you know, Barbara Barker and all of those great uh, theater, black theater companies that came out of New York that I wasn't a, able to be in when they were there because God had taken me on another path mm -hmm. at that time. 
but I want, when I decided that I wanted to be an actress and that was really where my heart was because I think acting, modeling and music kind of go hand in hand because it's like, acting is like a great song. You know, a great script is like a great song. It's a musical, it's music and yeah. it, and the words move the play along just like the words in a song move the song along. And being a model, to me, that was like acting. You know, I had to act like I was cold or act like I was happy, act like I was, and, and make you believe, <laughs> make, make, make you believe this dress, this, you know, Daisy Penny dress is like a thousand dollar dress that you should put on. <laughs> let, me, let me kick this over to you, Suze. Now, um, let's talk about your, your talk show um, that's coming out um, called Capital. It's a talk show that- Capital I Code. Yes, Code, C-O-D-E. Mm -hmm. Capital so Code is, is along with my friend, Anita Vadabatha, mm -hmm. who is a, a tech genius and is very involved in the, the tech field. I'm, I'm very involved in the scientific communi community because of my involvement with the Raw Science Film Festival, which I judge, help to judge every year. And consequently, I know a lot of science and tech and education people. But Capital Code came about because we, we have this thing called capital that most people immediately think of finances, of money. And yet capital covers so many other parts of our lives. There's digital capital, you know, people that are influencers on the internet around the world can have millions of followers and actually influence people's lives. There is the capital of branding. There's the capital of politics. There is the capital, there are capital cities. You know, it covers a lot, influence and reputation, your cachet, you know, you have a career and the things you've done are determined and become something else. And that's your capital. So we're gonna sit down with some really fascinating people and talk about that, what that means to everyone. So Capital Code is coming pretty soon and I hope people will, will check it out. Well, you definitely got a supporter here as well. Thank you. Um, Thank and you. let's talk about um, with your, you're doing something very wonderful in the midst of the COVID-19. You're making sure that the homeless people are being taken care of and food, feeding um, others uh, doing something that the Lord would have us to do, according to the Bible. So it's wonderful. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Well, you know, um, therefore go the grace of God, go I, you know, and I remember being starting in New York with Ford modeling agency, uh, which was the top agency in the world. And you would think that we, you would work right away. Not that I was homeless, but it was a struggle in the beginning. <laughs> And God just kind of put on my heart, which I've always had a heart for the homeless and to give to them. But during the COVID, I, God kind of just put on my heart to adopt a homeless community, a homeless encampment. I have other girlfriends that we've always been giving to the homeless. And I have a girlfriend named Sandy who uh, has an organization called Hannah Foundation, where she gives to the homeless. And, but it was hard during the COVID. And they were giving food away in these drive-bys, and but you had to have a car to go by and get it. And they were giving prepared food out. And so God kind of just put in my heart to go get the prepared food because I'm really picky at how I eat. So I wasn't going to eat it. And so for a while, I was like, I don't need that. So I'm not going to go get it. And he says, no, go get it and give it to find a homeless encampment and give it to them because they can't drive to whatever location it was. So I started this with some friends of mine and I have another girlfriend named Cassandra and she puts little bags together of stuff. And we make sure that once a week or however you are, and you don't have to go out of your way to where if you see, because homelessness is so prevalent right now, especially during the COVID, mm -hmm. that there's a homeless, if there's a, just a homeless person that's living near you and when, it, when you drive by and you see them every day and you go and you look at them, instead of just looking at them once a week, maybe take something to them and just say, hey, God sent me to give you this. And they're yeah. so open to it and so receptive because people kind of like dismiss them or, you know, they are invisible and we can't have that 
to where these people are invisible because of the fact that you could be there or and someone correct. you know right. could be there. Correct. And because God has blessed me so much that there's no way that I could continue to drive by these places, which I didn't before, but I made it a special effort. Before I would just give haphazardly, but I made it a point to once a week to where I would make sure that I went and got food. And if they weren't giving food out, I would go buy food for them and once a week or take them something. And the women there were like asking for face cream. And I was like, you know, something as simple as that. And you forget that us women, we want to have face cream. We want to have a little moisturizer on our face. And so I started putting little, you know, the little ones, the travel size ones together and giving those out and, and just trying to do God's work. You know, because yeah. he says, if you take care of the least of mine, I'll take care of you. So I said, okay, Lord, let make me, a, you know, a distributor of your love. And, it, yes. you know, and yes. so now tell you I started telling people to do that. I put it, posted it on Facebook, took some pictures of my homeless encampment, which is on yeah. on Venice and La Cienega. And okay. they were That's so the receptive and I was going to ask you, um, it, how is it any way anyone can get in contact with you if you have someone or you just reach out to people periodically on who you want to uh, give these packages to? I just give them out to whoever I give them out to. I know one's getting, um, and people ask me, Look, can I donate money to you? Or can I? And I go, no, it's not for me to do it only. It's for all yeah. of us to do it, to yeah. where whoever you're living by or whoever Suzette is living by, whoever somebody is living by, when you see that person, you see them every day, yeah. when you drive by or when you walk by, just once a week, you know, you're, you're, and, and take some them something to eat or, you know, take them some old clothes or take them whatever. It's wonderful, thing. It's wonderful to hear you doing that because um, the Bible tells you, um, you know, when, a, when a, one time the, uh, the apostles are asking, who is my neighbor? And Jesus was saying, you know, gave it a parable about who the neighbor was. And it was a story of the Good Samaritan. It's not the people you have to go way out for. It's the people right outside your home that's homeless. Right. So that is you're a right. beautiful, beautiful thing you're doing. Um, I hope and pray that um, you continue to be a blessing to so many. Now, um, we have a, we're short on time. So there's a couple more things I want to talk about really quickly. Um, Suze, where can people get in contact with you in terms of keeping up with what you have going on? Well, I'm all over the place. You know, I'm on uh, Twitter at, at Suse Green, S-U-S-A-Y-E-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. I'm on Facebook. You can find Suse Green. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me in a lot of places. You know, I, I believe in knowing what's going on. I believe in reaching out and touching people and, you know, them being able to find me. Um, it's, it's a, I mean, there will be a, a capital code page and all of, on all of social media and a, and a central home for it. But, you know, you can Google me, you can Google me cause I've done a lot and you can always find me. I'm all, I'm there every day, just like everyone else. You know, we've gone through this pandemic and this is something obviously because we're all going through it together. This is something that we all have been stopped in time and need to pay attention and see if we can't help one another. Yes. It's not that hard. Just like Thais is saying, you know, go in your neighborhood and see, you see the same people every day, you know who needs. And we all are guilty of throwing things away and not thinking about, you know, being a little bit entitled but we're blessed just to be alive, just to take breath every day. And I think it because of that, it's our duty to help our fellow man. That's what it's about. That is wonderful. Absolutely. These are God's children that's on the show. Mm -hmm. so Can I give you a little story? It's sure. so funny yeah. because really um, I, don't I don't know if Suze was with the Supremes then, but Sherry was with the Supremes one time when they performed on Soul Train. And, and there's a tape of it to where I was on Soul Train dancing and we had got the chance to ask questions to the Supremes. And I happened to ask a question saying, my name is Thais, I want, my question goes to Sherry Payne of the Supremes. And then 30 years later or longer, 
I end up doing a play that Sherry wrote and Suzanne came and everybody came to see it called A Lady in Waiting to where I'm the lead in it. And that was just such a, a circle moment. And that is just so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Now, um, for you, uh, Thais, what is your um, social media handle so people can be able to keep up with what's going on with you? I'm on Twitter as Thais Walsh. Uh, I'm on Facebook as Thais Walsh. Um, I have my website is Thais.com. So if you just Google Thais, Dot com it comes up on my imdb is there um i have a website i i'm i'm on twitter not as much as i should be but i you can follow me on twitter as well just let me know i'm still old school to where it's like who are you <laughs> I don't know if I wanna, I don't, <laughs> you know like what are you because i get, you know because on instagram i get so many um weird people that you know want to get on and they like hello how are you or whatever and and then they're like can uh, you know so i'm really careful about that so please tell that if you follow me please put in the comments that i saw you mm -hmm. on the show or tell me somewhere that you've seen me or that you're just following me because you're a fan or no, whatever no, so no, i can no, know no, that it's no. not a creepy crawler <laughs> Now, um, I, we like to have fun here on the Sherrard Show, so um, I'd like to be very spontaneous on a few things. Um, and I'm gonna throw it first with you, Suze. Now, you're, you sing lead on a song that's one of my absolute favorites. It was sung by the Hollies, but you sing it mm -hmm. as well. Uh, he Ain't Heavy, he's my brother. And I would like for you on the Sherrard Show to sing a tidbit of that. And while she's doing that, Thais, I want you to get together one of your best monologues. <laughs> How about that? To take us yeah. on it. Can we put you on the spot too? <laughs> it's okay. The Lord is long with many a winding turn that leads us to who knows where, who knows where, who knows where. But I am strong enough. Strong enough to carry him, cause he ain't heaven. No, he's my brother. Oh my goodness! Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful. We really appreciate that so Thank much. Again, Thank one you. of my favorite songs. So touching. Uh, Taish, you're not getting off the hook. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he's so bad. I know. Um, this is from a play, one of my favorite plays uh, that I won an award for down in St. Louis um, for Best Supporting Actress. It's called From Intimate Apparel. And um, yes, Soundbird came in a saloon last night in a new suit with a pocket full of money talking about he was going to spend his money and he didn't know what he was going to do with it. So I, he started gambling, rolling the dice. I asked him where he got all that money. He said his luck turned and he was going to ride it out. He said he was going to buy himself some draft horses. It made me laugh. He said he was going to take me someplace nice for a change. Shoot. You know, colored girl ain't been no place nice for a long time. So I thought to myself, how nice would that be? Putting my feet up and have myself a good time. But then he rolled the dice and that money changed. I said, Lord God, Please help me. And I turned around and he was gone. But then I knew he was George. And I knew everything was gone down by then. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> 
Ladies, I humbly yeah. thank you so much. But I want to sing today with y'all. I want to be a supreme. <laughs> In the name of love. Come on now. <laughs> well, ladies, I want to thank you so much for being uh, making my week, being a guest on the Shabar Show. It's so fascinating, so wonderful. I know so many people. I'm getting, I'm getting comments all over the place about yeah. that with all these beautiful ladies. And one particular person is asking, how, ladies, how are you able to look like you still 35 years old? What? <laughs> oh, thank you. I know you're thank sick. you. I know you're By sick. the good Lord, I, I'll, I'll just say this. From the time I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I met this woman named Lou Willard. And she was, I was 21. And I met this lady named Lou Willard. And I was dating her son and she looked fabulous. I mean, and I kept going, Lord, I want to be like her. <laughs> and I said, and then I found a scripture that said, he'll renew your youth. I don't know the scripture totally, but it was just, he said that he would renew our youth. And so that was something that I always said. And then I have to thank my mom and my aunt and my DNA because my mother looked very young. My aunt, very young my relatives look very young so I have to thank them and just eating well eating really really well and and I don't try to tell people what to eat but your diet and what you put inside reflects mm -hmm. on what you what, can, what you're going to look like on the outside Wait, so Both and you. then and then praying praying a lot yes <laughs> Please, <laughs> boy. <laughs> and not letting the not letting the haters get in your head. Just let them. Oh, absolutely not. You cannot get stressed out. I mean, not that we don't get stressed out, and that I don't get stressed out, and I go, "Okay, God, where's my next show? Or when are you going to make me a superstar? Or things like that." But praying and not getting so stressed out about this world. Yes. and my career and my life to where you have to have trust in God and know that he's going to prepare the way for you and that whatever is planned for you, which is really hard for us to do at times, to know that what is yours is going to be yours no matter what. And then just saying, and just staying clear and keeping a sense of youth because I try to keep like the young music, I mean, and listening to young music and listening to young things and staying, you know, trying to stay, have that young energy about me. And mm -hmm. and then, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky, but then I'm lucky because they say children and I, unfortunately I never had any kids. So I didn't have that stress of trying to raise a kid, but shoot, Suze looks great and she's raised kids. So Woo! maybe I, and then I rub on all the elder, older women that I know, I rub on them to make sure that, and say, I want some of whatever you got because you're looking good. That's you know right. what I mean? Now we it's all those jeans, isn't it? It's those jeans. It's getting plenty sleep. It's drinking lots of water. It's surrounding yourself with that energy that you're talking about, Thais. That is absolutely That correct. energy. Young people, you know, they've got all that. You know, surround myself with, I have two beautiful granddaughters and they keep me on my toes. <laughs> That's my right. nephews, my nephews kept me on my toes. I have four fabulous yeah. nephews. Yeah. And I have three great ladies. We're out of time. We're out of time. Yeah. I thank you all so much for being a guest on the show. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us, Sharon. We got to continue this conversation. These are some beautiful young ladies. I hope you learned something. If you have not, go ahead and subscribe to the Sharon Show to see this episode. It's also going to be airing on Comcast NBC as well as iHeartRadio. And mm -hmm. you can reach out to them. Their social media handles are on your bottom of your screen. You definitely want to um, reach out to them as well. Again, no creepy crawlers, please. <laughs> I'm Sherard. Join us on our next episode of the Sherard Show, where we will have Shirley Jones from the Jones Girls, as well as one of our very special guests. You don't want to miss this next week. I'm Sherard. In the next time, in, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week and be a blessing to others. Take care now. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Take care now. <laughs>